To pursue Lü Bu is to welcome death. Fabled as the strongest of his name, Lü was a notorious warlord who thrived during the Three Kingdoms period of ancient China. He is the warrior whose might no one could match, the lover who slew his master, the general who often betrayed his allies, the brute who served himself, and in death, the legend who became a gaming icon. Life of Lü Bu He is most famous for his starring role in the video game series Dynasty Warriors, and more recently in Total War Three Kingdoms. Lü is the toughest there is, but all that might comes with an ego to match. Legend has it he was an almost invulnerable warrior who switched sides on a whim, but history tells a different story. Chapter 1 The Early Days Poetry by the 8th century writer Li He describes Lü Bu as a green-eyed general, as well as the hero of our time and the will of heaven. But Li wrote of the warrior centuries after his death. Lü lived 2,000 years ago during the 2nd century. He came from Jingyuan, which is the present-day city of Baotou in Inner Mongolia, China. He was said to be a master archer and horseman. Legend has it that his mare was a powerful Chituma, a red hare, with the ability to leap over moats and travel over 300 miles per day. As a young man, Lü Bu was impressive, so much so that the minor warlord, Ding Yuan, recruited Lü Bu and kept him close as a trusted aide. But that was a grave mistake. Chapter 2 Meeting Dong Zhuo in the year 189, the emperor passed and a power struggle broke out between the different groups of the imperial court in the old Chinese capital of Luoyang. Ding Yuan, accompanied by Lü Bu, brought his army to the city on a mission to assist General He Jing in eliminating the influential eunuch faction of the imperial court. But He wound up being killed by the eunuch after the veteran warlord Dong Zhuo used his army to occupy Luoyang. Dong wanted to kill Ding and take control of his troops. To accomplish this, he persuaded Lü Bu to betray Ding and join him. Lü decapitated Ding and presented his head to Dong Zhuo as tribute. Dong was impressed. He appointed Lü Bu as cavalry commandant and felt great affection and trust for the man and made him his foster son. Chapter 3 Like Father, Like Son once in control of Luoyang, Dong Zhuo put a child on the throne, a puppet emperor named Xian. Concern at this sparked others to form a coalition against him and his cohorts. And in the year 190, the warlord Yuan Xiao led the alliance against Dong Zhuo into battle. Lü Bu fought many battles against Yuan's forces to defend Dong Zhuo and keep his master safe. But Dong was a despot and a rude and ignorant one to boot. He was also a coward. Dong was paranoid of assassination and kept Liu close by as his personal bodyguard. And like Liu Bu, he had a very short fuse. One day he became so angry that he threw a blade at his foster son. Liu dodged this and Dong calmed down. But the damage was done and Liu now held a grudge. The warrior became increasingly unhappy in his role as Dong's personal protector and, in the Three Kingdom story, began a love affair with one of his master's maidens. Her name was Diao Chan. Lü worried how Dong would react to this, so he kept their relationship secret. While Diao Chan is not real, she is forever connected to Lü Bu because of the Three Kingdom story. This ancient beauty was sent by her foster father to turn Dong Zhuo and Lü Bu against each other. She was given to Dong as a concubine, but was also betrothed to Lü Bu. This led to a love triangle of hate, jealousy, and betrayal. One night, Lü slipped into Dong's quarters to see Diao Chan. She acts distraught and feigns a suicide attempt. She tells Lü she's ashamed of herself after being violated by their master. Lü is mad and this is what leads him to killing Dong in the story. Depending on the lore, Diao Chan's story differs. Some claim she was killed by Dong Zhuo loyalists. Others say she roamed the land with Lü Bu. In one story, Diao Chan is captured at the Battle of Xia Pi and Cao Cao presents her as a gift to Guan Yu in the hope of winning the war god's loyalty. But Guan Yu suspects trickery from Diao Chan due to her previous treachery and kills her. 
In another tale, Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei all want to marry Diao Chan. They get into a heated argument, and Guan Yu then kills her to put an end to it. But now let's get back to the history. Later, some of Dong's officials pitched Liu Bu a plan to eliminate their master. Liu hesitated. Despite his distaste for the man, Dong was his adoptive father. Nonetheless, he was persuaded that Dong was not his blood and cared little for him. So, Liu Bu saw to the matter personally. Chapter Four: The Death of Dong Zuo. One morning, Liu greeted his master at the palace gates with a band of men led by Li Su. All appeared normal until Li stabbed Dong. The despot cried out for Liu to save him, but his foster son delivered the killing blow. And so, an order was made that anyone who tried to move the remains of Dong Zhuo did so on bane of death. The corpse remained outside with a burning wick placed on Dong's fat belly. The flame shone like the sun and lasted for days. But even though Dong was dead, his influence remained. Some of his followers banded together and attacked Liu's forces at Chang'an after they were refused amnesty. That's when their general and Dong Zhuo loyalist Guo Si came across Liu Bu. The two fought in a one-on-one -on -one duel, but Guo was quickly defeated and injured. His men pushed Liu Bu back and saved their master. The hot-headed warrior could not beat them all, so he abandoned Chang'an and fled. He tied Dong Zhuo's head to the saddle of his red mare and rode with his men to join the warlord Yuan Su. What happened next isn't clear. Either Yuan welcomed Liu into his ranks, then Liu acted arrogantly and felt underappreciated, or Liu expected to be welcomed into Yuan's army for killing Dong Zhuo, but Yuan despised him for his treachery. Either way, Liu was soon wandering the land again, seeking a place to carve out for his own. Chapter Five: Daggers in the Dark. Liu Bu next traveled to see Yuan Shao, the former leader of the alliance against Dong Zhuo. Liu impressed, but his arrogance took center stage. He believed he had done his new host a favor by eliminating Dong Zhuo, and Yuan didn't like this one bit. So rather than kill him outright, he played pretend and recommended Liu work for him. But Liu sensed something was afoot and journeyed back to Luoyang. Yuan had thirty of his best men escort Liu along the way, and one night while at rest, one of them snuck into Liu's tent and stabbed the man sleeping with a knife. Except Liu wasn't there and never was. He left the night before and had one of his men take his place. And with that, the warrior with no place to call his own set out on a path once again. Chapter Six: Little Brother Liu. After a time, Liu wound up joining with Liu Bei in Shu Province. This was a warlord and man he held deep respect and admiration for. He even went as far as to call him little brother. Yuan Shu soon found out that Liu Bu was in Shu and wrote him a letter. He persuaded him to dispatch Liu's forces. Liu agreed and went to face them in Xiapi City. Liu squashed Liu's forces and captured his family and the families of his allies. Liu, meanwhile, was far away fighting a losing battle against Yuan Shu. He escaped and later surrendered to Liu. Yuan Shu promised Liu Bu supplies for his actions, but they never arrived. Liu was irate. So instead of taking Liu Bei prisoner, he welcomed him and had him work for him. Liu made himself governor of Shu Province. Liu would later leave and work for Cao Cao. It is said that Liu would even use his might to resolve disputes. Legend has it he once prevented a battle between Liu Bei and Yuan Shu forces with a single arrow. Liu proposed that if he hit the lower part of a bladed weapon, then both sides must withdraw. If he missed, they could fight. Liu hit his mark, and bloodshed was avoided. Chapter Seven: How the Mighty Fall. Yuan declared himself emperor, and despite their history, this was treason, and war would come. He sought Liu Bu as his ally, so he proposed his son marry Liu's daughter. Liu agreed, then disagreed after recalling how Yuan refused to help him in the past. The two, however, soon agreed an uneasy alliance. Once again, Liu was facing Liu Bei's forces, but this time they were bolstered by reinforcements from Cao Cao. Liu's men won the day, but they had angered Cao Cao, and the hero of chaos would see to Liu Bu's downfall personally. Yuan Shu was reluctant to send reinforcements. 
Liu thought this because he didn't give over his daughter for marriage. He rode out with her in an attempt to break the siege, but he couldn't make it past Cao Cao's men. The siege lasted almost three months in all, and Yuan Shu reinforcements never showed. And despite his weary forcism, Cao Cao soon found Liu Bu's men committing betrayal against their master and delivering him the warlord's key personnel. Not long after, Liu Bu too soon found himself surrounded and captured. It is said he asked his own men to behead him, but they refused. Liu Bu was bonded and brought before Cao Cao. He complained that the rope was too tight. Cao Cao told him tigers require tight restraints. Liu sought forgiveness and offered to help Cao Cao. The warlord considered Liu's pledge of service, but Liu Bei reminded him of what Liu had done with his previous masters. And so, Liu Bu and his allies were executed by hanging. Their corpses were decapitated and heads sent to the capital of Shu. And with that, the life of Liu Bu was over.